again, YouTube. This is Dr. Kendo, and I'm here with Scribble Knots Unlimited. This is part two of the Hinch Maniacs from Gravity Falls. Here we go. I love these characters, so uh, definitely excited about this one. We're starting off with a hazmat worker as the source object. Doesn't matter if it comes out male or female. They basically look the same for the most part. You're going to want to take the head and the arms off, and then you're going to shrink down the legs just to a tiny size. For those who have seen my series, the reason that we do this, you've probably seen it in the past, is is that we just uh, need to keep on the original legs of your source object so that it doesn't sink into the ground. That's just a feature in Scribble Knots Unlimited. Whenever you take away the source legs, for some reason, your character will sink deep down. So then we've taken a siren, the monster siren, of course, not the alarm, um, and the siren legs are what we've used right there for the legs on Keyhole. This is Keyhole from the uh, Hench Maniacs. Of course, if you guys have not seen yet, there is a part one to this series. As I said, you know, in the introduction of this video, this this is part two, and so we have made a lot of the hench maniacs already, five of them to be exact. And now here in the top right corner of the 23rd page of the 29 page library, we've taken this particular arm. It comes from like a troglodyte or something like that, and uh, we're going to use that for the first part of the arms on keyhole, but then Jenny Greenteeth is going to be for the second part for the hands and stuff like that, the bottom of the arms. And so we'll put this in the correct positions and whatnot, and then of course just copy and paste it on the other side for the left arm to our right, of course. And so the body was pretty simple right here. The middle part right there on his chest was just a rat tail to show some definition in his chest. But usually when I'm doing this properties or scripting editor stuff, uh, I like to read background information and fun facts, but the fun facts and or background information on these characters will be really short because we have so many of them and there really is not enough time in the episode for me to go into great length and detail on each one. But we'll start here. Originally intended to have green skin in his concept art, Keyhole is a blue hench maniac with a forehead that has a giant keyhole on it. Go figure. He's a pretty short little guy, but his head or forehead is actually quite tall, and that leads me actually into here. You can see that his head has been created. We started off with the head as the source object. Just use a dot for the top of the keyhole, and a little leg shape from the 29 page library. It's just in the first page, or you could type in leg, I think. Unless it's the arm. <laughs> but the main shape of his whole head and forehead and stuff like that. And then a dunce cap was right below the the dot for the keyhole painted black, of course. And so then we've got a uh, ball. Type that in and do it twice for the eyes right there, the main part of the eyes. And we're going to take a scorpion middle bottom piece of the tail right there with the little shiny white glimmer on it. That's going to be for his nose. And of course, then a bean is going to be for his little goofy mouth right there, uh, just the main white part. But then there's going to be a jellyfish, this upper tentacle piece uh, on either side of the jellyfish. You can use that for the lines within to show his teeth off, you know, to give it some more definition and things. Little pink dots for the spots that are to the left of the keyhole, our left. An eyebrow, one black, one blue on either side of the eyes. And little pimples for not only the pupil of the eyes, but also for the nostrils in the nose. And then we're gonna start off with a bat for the source object of our next character. I love this character's art right here, so this will be exciting if we can get this accurately to the Gravity Falls series. We're gonna take away all the pieces of the bat, except for, of course, the torso. Leave that on, because you have to. But we're gonna cover it up with a sphere right here. So that's a whitish, grayish white sphere. And then just a circle for the main part. This is going to be the eye bats. So of course that's going to be for like the colored part of the eyes. And then a dot sort of big is going to be for the pupil of the eye, the black part. And then another dot that's with just the white, the plain color, for the little glint or glimmer in the eyeball. And then uh, dragon wings is actually what we're going to go with for the wings on the eye bats. You know, your thought might be, oh, I'm just going to do bat wings or something like that. Or keep the wings of the bat originally. Now, of course, you guys can create however you want, but I think that this dragon wing actually looks so much like the wing of the iBats, you know, from the Weird Mageddon episodes. So we'll talk about that iBat specifically in just a second, but a shambler, the back arm of the shambler, is going to be sort of for these, like, veins almost of the eyes, you know, they're coming off of the wings, so it's more just like that is the platform where the wings are attached to the eyes. And then, of course, whisker is going to be all around the eyeball here in the yellowish part and stuff for the lines, and then I just did that last line within the yellow right there uh, as a jellyfish upper tentacle and another dot for some shininess on the eye bat. But let's talk about these things. The eye bats are basically eyeballs with bat-like wings. When Ford Pines went to live in Gravity Falls, he wanted to learn more about the supernatural creatures and things, and the eye bats were some of the creatures that he found, captured, put into a jar, and wrote about in his journal. You can actually see one of the eye bats actually is pinned on the wall in Ford's room in a flashback sequence. Anyway, in the events of Weird Mageddon, there are 
are swarms of larger red-winged iBats coming from the Nightmare Realm, and those are the iBats that I've chosen to create for this episode. As I mentioned before, I think that these things are awesome, and I love the design for them, I can't say that enough. But as far as their projectile, I'm actually going to show you something I have shown off in this series before, but not very often. It's something that you should definitely look up so you can get text to explain it, but uh, here I've spawned a cockatrice, and then I'm riding on the back of it and shooting. If you just tap or click off into the distance, it'll shoot out this thing, and what you want to do is you want to try to click that projectile that this cockatrice shoots out. This projectile is stone magic. You can see that the name said change me up there, but if we go into the scripting, there's a little at sign and it says stone magic. Well, you want to take away the C and then just write the C once again and push the check mark. And so now basically what that's going to do is it's going to put that into our, I guess, remembered list of terms that you've used or things that you've written down in Scribblenauts. And so you can go to your little arrows down at the bottom left corner and uh, you click the little two arrows and it shows you basically past things that you've typed in the game. So then you want to use stone magic and it's going to stay as bullet. So you guys saw that it had bullet, but stone magic is what it's going to be shooting out. So I'll test it out against this hostile strong B right here. Uh, and bees are really weak in this game. So that's why I just, I made it strong so it wouldn't die immediately. And you guys can see that it is shooting out stone magic. That's of course with the purpose that, you know, I bats do turn characters to stone as we noticed when Wendy Corduroy, whom I'm going to spawn here because I have made her and the main family members in past episodes in this series. So there's my Wendy creation. She's sitting on the eye bat, just like in the weird Mageddon episode. And you can remember that she shoots eight balls face with it, turning it to stone. And so if you want to do that more like how it appears in Gravity Falls, you could maybe go into the scripting and make it so that when this object sees an object or something like that, you know, it might be sees, it might be moves near an object, you could make it so that that trigger target gains an adjective and do like petrified or something like that, stone petrified. So that's just one option. So now we'll move on, of course, to a lifeguard as the source object. Take the female lifeguard right here, and this is going to be for Peronica. Peronica is epic as well. It's another one of my favorite hench maniacs. And so, of course, we're going to type in Anne and just take the leg. This is for the heels mainly, you know, the stilettos right there. And also it's a, uh, I guess, thin enough leg because Scribblenauts characters are often not very skinny or anything like that. You know, they're sort of short, fat, stocky characters with big heads. And so to get this kind of accurate to Peronica's real look, this is what I'm doing. And I typed in Thin Fam, I believe is how you would pronounce that theme. T-H-I-N-H space P-H-A-M. And that's just mainly for the cape. So we actually moved that, uh, we took the torso of it, the female version, and then moved the cape into the back. Jenny Green Teeth once again for the bottom arms right here. And uh, I'm not sure actually that I'm going to keep the lifeguard's arms on. So we'll take those off because they were a little bit too long for what I wanted. So here on the 10th page of the 29 page library, you can grab this greenish mutant arm and paint that pink, of course. And that'll be for the top part, as well as we're going to use that same stamp for actually the neck right here of Peronica. So that same stamp will double as her neck. And of course, these uh, Jenny Green Teeth arms are like almost white. You know, I did them like a super light pink, just like this right here, the wisp. We took the end of the wisp. There are these little fire shaped looking pieces of the wisp, I guess, on the ends of the wisp. And so with that, that'll be for the flames right here that are all over Peronica's limbs and a rat tail. We'll put this, uh, just paint it all black and then kind of move it down, shrink it, of course, down to the smallest size, but then move it down for some definition there on her abs. And then a comb over is what we're going to use. I think I like that the best, actually. So we'll do a comb over on both sides for the ties of the cape in front. And so Peronica, we've named her that. And we'll also put a wisp piece here on either arm so that there are some flames coming off of that section of her. But yes, for background information, of course, Peronica is a pink demon with short pink hair, horns, and white flames around her limbs. If not obvious, Peronica's name plays on the Latin word for fire, which is pyro, and of course combines it with the name Veronica to make Peronica. And it looks like Pyronica, because, you know, Pyro, Peronica. But just going off of how Bill Cipher pronounced her name in the episode where he introduces all of his friends, it is Peronica. And in one of the concept arts for Peronica, her limbs actually consisted of blue flames rather than white. But I like her design now. She's crazy, she's kooky, and she's awesome. But yes, I love all of Bill Cipher's hench maniacs, except for maybe one, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But no, they're really cool. I think that they are it's just some crazy cool characters. One thing that I 
always loved to do in uh, elementary school when I was little, and this may be why I like Scribble not so much, is I used to take, like, we had this project where we had these little, like, space monsters, and you were supposed to mix and match all their body pieces. So, like, each one would be split apart by its head, body, arms, and legs, and so you could mix and combine them. It was just like a fun little creative project, and I just loved mixing and matching, taking the head from one and then an arm from another and then a body from this one and, you know, putting the legs down from a whole nother one and then just combining it all together into one super monster. So that, again, must be why I love uh, Scribble Knots Unlimited. But that's also why I love the hench maniacs. I feel like a lot of them, you know, take pieces from other things like 8-Ball has 8-Balls for eyes. You know, Xanthar is like a walking piece of toast with a hippo bear body and all this other stuff. So anyway, we've got a head as the source object right here and we're gonna put down Amber as the main part of the head and then an eagle, the front wing of the eagle. Paint that sort of this dark purple color and then we'll place down the uh, eagle wing again but paint it all black. That's gonna be for the inner workings of her mouth and the purple part of course is like the lipstick. And so then we've got ivory right here. This is gonna be for the main strand of hair on the top but then we'll fill it in with some other pieces. Uh, then a T-Rex. We're gonna take the very end tail piece of the T-Rex. That'll be what we use for the horn. Well, all the horns on her head. And so here's the main one right there and then we're gonna take the eagle's front wing once again for the hair on both sides actually you know part of her bangs kind of going over the front of her face but then also this other one on the back and a basilosaurus is what we're gonna use we're gonna take just before the end piece of the tail it's so it's not the very very end fin piece but right before that and uh, you know you could use I guess a few things for the horns right here her horns are not this exact shape but there is not a lot of things in scribble knots that are just one stamp that can do the exact shape of her horns but the reason that I went with the Basilosaurus is because they were close but also it has this like two different colors on it and if you look at pictures of Piranica like uh, at the end of all of my episodes I show off a comparison piece of the Scribble Knots character that I create next to the real character but yes if you look at Piranica and her horns they are actually almost like uh, there's like lighting or shading you know on the bottom the there's like shaded parts on the bottom of the horns and then they're a little bit lighter on the top and so then of course we've just got a circle for the eye and a dot for the colored part of the eye with a 29 page library arm shape in there for the glint or white glimmer. A whisker is going to be for the eyelashes. An angler fish, the front fin is what we're using right now for this front tooth, you know, the little buck teeth right there in the front. And then a fang is what we're going to use on either side of that. The fang will be for the smaller fangs right there. Sugar cube is what we're going to take and uh, put that on the bottom row. For these two bottom teeth right here, there's one and uh, we'll place the other one down right there and now we'll get the tongue so to do the tongue I guess we'll go into the 29 page library and uh, grab these little arms here on the third page they're like some sort of short fat arms but they have a little curve in them so that'll be for the tongue and then an ivory once again we're gonna copy that same ivory and put that down for the bottom part of her hair at the very end and so this is all looking okay so we'll go ahead and name this Piranica head and uh, so whenever you're doing your head and your body separately in the object editor, you want to be sure and go into the properties editor, and under the equipment tab right here, you want to check off can be worn on the face like glasses, or can be worn on the head like a hat, if you want to do that. But anyway, we're going to move on and start with a rectangle as the source object. This is going to be for Hectorgon, pretty interesting character right here. Anyway, we've got this trapezoid shape next to this parallelogram right here, and then we're going to use a uh, this other shape from the geometry library right there, and uh, all of these are going to kind of hopefully fit together in the shape that I need. It's going to take a lot of moving around and experimenting, but this is going to be for the main body, of course. And then a black mamba is going to be what we're going to use for the uh, mustache. We're going to use the tail end of the black mamba. You would think, okay, maybe I'll just use a mustache. You could. I wanted a little bit more control over where it was going to go and what the pieces were going to look like, and so I went with that. You could do, though, the mustache and get a pretty good representation of it, I guess. And so lips are for the lips, of course. And then I've used a kite down below for the tie as well as just a circle for the base of the tie. Now again, that's something where you could type in tie, but you won't get the exact shape. You won't get kind of a wide tie like this is, which I think gives us a lot more control over the tie and uh, how it looks. And so then of course uh, an octopus, the straightest tentacle piece of an octopus that you can find. It's kind of in the back on the uh, to our right side. And uh, that's going to be for the main piece of the arm of Hectorgon with jellyfish tentacle pieces, the upper tentacle line piece. That's going to be for some indentations there underneath his arm. Jenny green teeth arms are going to be for the bottom parts where the hands are and things like that. And then an arm from the 
the 10th page of the 29 page library. Again, it's that green mutant arm with a circle. That's going to make the hat not only the stripe in that bowler hat right there, but the main parts of the hat as well. And that all looks good. So let's go ahead and, uh, of course, read some background information and fun facts. Hectorgon is a red hexagonal or hexagonal demon with a mustache, big lips, a tie, and a bowler hat. Hectorgon is also apparently Alex Hirsch's favorite demon. His name is an obvious combination of the name Hector and the shape of a hexagon. I would say that he is probably the creation of this episode that was the most troubling for me to envision, in that I often see a character in anything and start telling myself, okay, if I'm creating that in Scribble Knots, I'd use this shape and this stamp, etc., etc., but with Hector gone, I did have to pause and consider many different options, kind of longer than usual, I guess. But it's fun, it looks like I think we got it pretty well, you know, nailed right here, it looks pretty good, so. That's gonna do it, I just sort of looked at the lines and stuff and the shapes and I just, that's kind of always what I think, is I just isolate each character down to one part of that character and think, okay, how can we create that one part and then all the pieces come together like a puzzle or a crossword puzzle of some sort. But here we go, we're starting off with a golem as the source object, make it kind of small, but then make the torso itself fatter, so the body definitely size that up to be fatter, take off the main arms, not the shoulder pieces, and the head, of course, shrink down the little tiny feet, well, shrink them down to make them tiny, and then put them behind, and then we're gonna use Tiny, the uh, Maxwell brother, Tiny, who's actually, it's an ironic name, because he's not so tiny, he's kind of got big arms and stuff, and so we'll use those for the arms right here, of our last creation, which is gonna be Pacifier, that's Passive-Fire. Anyway, we're just doing some more sizing adjustments here, hopefully it's all gonna sort of look appropriate to sized, I guess correctly sized, I should say. A chimera fish, we're gonna take that front fin that's kind of pointing up, and that's gonna be for these, uh, well, eyeball nippies right there. Yes, this is a disturbing <laughs> thing. Anyway, we'll use a BB. No, not like BB-8. I'm talking about a BB, like from a BB gun. That's going to be for the little eyes there and the nippies, and then uh, the actual nips or pupils for the eyes are going to be the pimple right here. And so that's all coming together. It looks all right, <laughs> as all right as this character can look. And then a bean. We'll take that. And, of course, uh, that bean is going to be for the kind of main part of the pacifier, just uh, the base, I guess, right here. And so that's positioned, I think, right. And uh, we'll paint it this color right here, this kind of red orange and then I'm gonna use a wristband this is gonna be sort of for the attachment to the main part of the pacifier after the base and so right here this will be the attachment piece that uh, goes right next to the wristband and then we're gonna do BB once again a BB that's gonna be for kind of the body parts that are sticking out among this pacifier we actually will make this bean just one notch bigger and I think that'll be good and so then of course we'll take wristband several times and make that be the chain coming down off of the wristband strap part we're gonna use the 10th page library arm shape from the 29 page library. That green mutant arm, yet again, we're using it a lot in this episode. That's going to be for the shackle right here. And then this middle bottom arm from the 20th page of the 29 page library, that's going to make it for the toes right there. If you paint it all black, that's just going to be for the toes. And so there we go. We got pacifier. And so, of course, we'll talk about this one. Uh, by far the creepiest hench maniac, in my opinion, is pacifier. He looks sort of like a demonic dark gray baby with big black horns and glowing red eyes. There's there's also a big pacifier right in the middle of his belly, which coincidentally seems to also be his second mouth, and chained to his left ankle. Again, this hench maniac really freaks me out. Maybe you guys are cool with eyeball titties, but I'm freaked out. And just look at his head right here, I mean, holy crap. Uh, <laughs> so we've got a head as the main source object, of course, but then taking this arm from the 22nd page, that's going to be for both of his lips, so one on the top, and then one rotated around to be his bottom lip as well, and we're going to go with Tooth Fairy Wing. That's gonna be what I used for the nose right here. You could also probably go with that same scorpion piece that we used for keyholes nose. So if you want to do that instead, a boomerang is what I did for sort of the lines beneath the eyes right there. The sort of facial flaps, cheekbones maybe. This top piece that is the cross on his head is actually I just used a shuriken for one stamp that can kind of get what we want. Doe is what I used for the almost Bill Cypherish looking eye right there that's on the top, and 
uh, just the rhombus or diamond shape right there behind that dough. Tenth page mutant arm, once again, from the 29 page library. That's going to be for the kind of holsters of the horn, I guess you could say, you know, where the horn attaches in. And so the horn itself is actually the top middle piece of the scorpion right here, painted all black and made really huge. And so if you don't do it just completely pitch black, but do it one step from that, you can actually see some detail in the horns. And I thought that that looked good. Dots for the eyes and pimples for the nostrils. And so this is everybody. This is awesome. I love this. Look at all the hench maniacs right here. And we've got the eye bats. <laughs> I need to dismount that eye bat right there. So let it roam free. But yes, that is so amazing. I think that this is really cool. This was one of my favorite creations to date. Of course, I don't know what's going to beat the Teen Titans right now. That was my favorite episode to create. But these are pretty amazing. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know that uh, the Gravity Falls people, uh, the fans are sad, of course, that the series has come to an end. I can only hope that this Scribble Knots kind of gives you a nice tribute and revival for it. But thank you so much. Remember, when you're requesting items for me to create in this series, I just make whatever is most popular or most requested each week, and that's just based on movies, TV shows, and gaming characters or objects. It doesn't have to be a living being, but anyway. Remember to support me on patreon.com slash drkeindio, where one of the reward tiers in that Patreon is for you to have your Scribblenauts Unlimited creation made automatically in one of the episodes, even if it's not most popular or most requested. So go check it out with the annotation. And I will catch you guys on the next vid, and thanks for viewing. And down the road up twists and turns.